Okay, here we're told that we have a fluid with a specific weight of 50 pounds force per cubic foot flowing with a flow rate of two cubic feet per second in a six inch diameter pipeline. Uh, under those conditions, the frictional stress is 0.5 pounds force per square foot. And we're asked to find the head loss per foot of pipe. So the units of that will be in feet per feet because head loss is um, you know in feet and then per foot, so it'd be feet per feet. And then also how much power is lost per foot of pipe. So that would be horsepower per foot. So let's go ahead and get started on this. So, so we're told, um, so we're trying to find the head loss per foot of pipe. So the head loss is going to be the major head loss that we're dealing with here. It's a major head loss just due to, due to the viscous effects. And that, that major head loss is just the friction factor times L over D times the velocity head. Okay, let me go ahead and rearrange that to just solve for the head loss per unit length. So that's simple enough. So we're at that point. Now let's go ahead and substitute in for the friction factor. We're given, we're given the frictional stress in the problem statement and that'll be related to the friction factor. So if you go back and look through your notes, you'll see that the friction factor is really just a dimensionless wall shear stress. It's actually four times the wall shear stress made dimensionless by the dynamic pressure in the pipe. So that's what the friction factor is, just a dimensionless wall shear stress. The factor of four is just kind of a historical um, addition. This is called the Darcy friction factor, and they put in this additional factor of four when they defined it. But it's just a dimensionless wall shear stress. Since we're given um, the volumetric flow rate, let's just write the, the average velocity in terms of volumetric flow rate. So average velocity will be the volumetric flow rate divided by the cross-sectional area of the pipe. So that's that. So we can go ahead and use the given data. So we're told that the volumetric flow rate is 2 cubic feet per second. Uh, we're told the diameter is 6 inches, so that'll be uh, 1 half foot. And from that information, you can find the average velocity in the pipe just from this expression. So when you plug in those numbers and work it out, that comes out to be 10.19 feet per second. We're also told that the specific weight of the fluid is 50 pounds force per cubic foot. And if you want to express the density by itself, that would just end up being 50 pounds mass per cubic foot. Just keep in mind that one pound force is 32.2 pounds mass feet per second squared. So you have to deal with these English uh, unit conversions. Uh, we're also told that the wall shear stress was uh, 0.5 pounds force per square foot. And uh, so from that information, we can take this wall shear stress, plug it in here. We have the density now here. We have the average velocity here. So we can substitute them in to get the friction factor. And when you go through that and do a, a unit conversion, this comes out to be 0 0.0248. And now that we have the friction factor, uh, we know the pipe diameter, we know the average velocity, we know gravity is 32.2 feet per second squared. We can find the head loss per unit length. So when we plug those numbers in, and again, there may be some uh, unit conversions that you have to do there, but this comes out to be 0.08. It's, it's dimensionless because head loss is in terms of length, and then of course length is in terms of length. So that's part A. So really for part A, the key thing is just knowing how to express the head loss, the major head loss, you know, how, how that's a related to the friction factor, for example, and then knowing that the friction factor is related to the wall shear stress. It's just a dimensionless wall shear stress. Those are the key components of that. And then the rest of this is just some unit conversions you have to be careful of. Now part B is to find out what's the power lost per unit foot of pipe. This one's a little trickier. In the lecture video we talked about uh, shaft power. If you know the shaft head you can relate, let me write that down. The, the shaft head is related to the shaft power in the following way. And we can do the, actually the same kind of expression for the 
um, power lost due to viscous effects. So it'd be the the power here is not the sh shaft power, but it's the power lost due to viscous effects. So it'll look actually much the same. So we could rearrange that to find the power loss due to viscous effects divided by the length, because we want this per unit foot. And that'll be rho, the density of the fluid times the volumetric flow rate times the gravitational acceleration times the head loss per unit length, which we just calculated a moment ago. And we have these, these um, parameters, right? We have the density, it's 50 pounds mass per cubic foot. We know the volumetric flow rate, that's the two cubic feet per second. We know gravity is 32.2 feet per second squared. HL over L, we calculated just moments ago. And then there may be a unit conversion you have to deal with along the way. But when you plug in the values, this comes out to be 8.0 pounds force per second when you work out the units. Kind of a weird set of units because it's power over length. They asked us to do it in terms of horsepower per foot. So there's a unit conversion I'll show in just a moment. But when you do that, that comes out to be 0 0.145 horsepower. Uh, try to write that properly. Horsepower per foot. The unit conversion um, is one horsepower is 550 pounds force feet over second. So anyway, that's the second part of the problem is what's the power loss due to viscous effects per unit length in the pipe. So that's what that one is. Okay, um, so in this problem, this one's a little bit trickier because you it goes back to remembering some definitions and such. So for part A, it was a matter of knowing what the major head loss is in terms of the friction factor. And then also, this is probably the hardest part, is knowing that the friction factor is a dimensionless wall shear stress. And then for part B, it's a matter of knowing how to relate the head quantity to a power quantity. So it looks very much the same as like the shaft head term, but it's just for head loss. And then uh, the other difficulty in this problem is just unit conversions, knowing how to go between pounds force and pounds mass and horsepower and pounds force and so on. Okay, we'll go ahead and end the example there.